Good afternoon, math students. I hope you're having a great day. Let's learn about simple interest, and then later on in the video, I will go over compounding interest. So this problem scenario says you're paid, or you're given 7% simple interest, and it's applied every year. We also can tell from the table that my initial investment, or my initial deposit, is $10,000, because that occurs at time zero. So I deposited $10,000 and I just let it sit there and my money grows each year by a certain amount. A couple things. Simple interest right here implies arithmetic growth. And maybe you've studied arithmetic sequences, but I'll go over it if you haven't. So simple interest arithmetic. And the equation that relates to arithmetic growth is y equals mx plus b. And we'll use this a little bit later. But you might be able to see the amount of growth each year. It's going up by the same amount each year. That's what really arithmetic means is that you're adding the same amount each year to get to the next year's balance. You, you might be able to see that amount real quickly, but sometimes the numbers are more complicated than this, so I want to show you the process I go through to figure out that number. I'm going to bring up my fancy calculator, and your calculator doesn't have to be this fancy. It will work very fine. Let's start with the year three balance right here and really my goal is to figure out my balance for year four and year five but watch we're going to start with a year three balance this is one way to do it and i'm going to find a common difference so i'll start with the twelve thousand one hundred which is my year three balance and the balance right before it is the balance from year two i'm going to subtract that balance so year three balance minus year two balance so it's twelve thousand one hundred minus eleven thousand four hundred that gives me $700. And I'm going to do that process at least one more time. I'm now going to take the 11,400 minus the balance right before it, which is 10,700. So 11,400 minus 10,700. That gives me the same thing. So we have a common difference. Common just means they're the same. And you can do this one more time. You can take 10,700 minus 10,000 and you will also get 700. So that's how much the account is growing by each year. It's growing by $700. In other words, I'm adding that common difference of 700. And again, you might have been able to see that right away, but in other words, 10,000 plus 700 is 10,700. 10,700 plus 700 is 11,400 and so on. So based on that, go ahead and pause the video and tell me the end of year balance for year four and year five. Welcome back. Well, hopefully you got 12,800 right here because 12,100 plus 700 is 12,800. And then if you add 700 to 12,800, you should get 13,500. Now let's take this one step further. Let's say we wanted to find the end of year balance at year 30. How would you do that? Well, one way to go about it is you could just keep adding 700 each time to the new balance until you get to year 30. That's a great way to do it, and sometimes I do it that way. But there's a quicker way to do it, and that's what I'm going to show you. So we're going to use this equation, y equals mx plus b. Now again, simple interest means arithmetic growth. And just to refresh your memory, arithmetic means that you're adding the same number each time to get to the next year's balance. And we're going to use this equation, y equals mx plus b. Hopefully you've seen this. And watch how I write the equation that represents this bank balance. I'm going to replace for m and b as follows. I'll bring down my y and my equal sign. And I'm going to replace the m with the common difference, which was 700. So m put in 700. Bring down your x. 
bring down your plus sign and replace the B with the initial deposit, which is 10,000. So replace B with 10,000. And this is the equation that I'm going to work with right here. Y equals 700 times X plus 10,000. Now remember, X represents your time, Y represents your balance. So I'm just going to replace the X with this 30 right here and see what we get. So let's do that. So Y equals 700, and I'll replace the X with 30, because that's what I'm looking for, is the balance at year 30. So the X, replace that with 30, plus the 10,000. Just bring the 10,000 down, and let's simplify this. 700 times 30 is 21,000, plus 10,000. When we add that up, we get 31,000. So my balance at year 30 is $31,000. And that's not bad. Remember, I just let my money sit there. And at the end of year 30, I have $31,000. So that's how simple interest works. Let me just real quick explain where this 7% comes into play. It might not be obvious. Let's see if I can just clear this out. If you take the common difference or the amount that the balance is growing by each year, which is $700, this amount, and you divide it by the initial balance at time zero, which is 10,000. If you divide these two and then multiply it by 100 to change it to a percent, and you can do this on your calculator, you will get 7%. It'll show up as a seven, on your calculator, you need to tack on the percent symbol. So in other words, 700 divided by 10,000 times 100 equals 7%, and that's where this 7% is coming into play. Let's go to another example. This is compounding interest, and the scenario is the same, except now it's compounding instead of simple interest. So again, we start with 10,000, just like before. And then if you look at the bank balance from the year zero to year one, it goes up by $700. But from year one to year two, it's going up by $749. That's why this situation is not arithmetic because we're not adding the same amount each time. The amount is actually increasing each, each year. So let me give you a little hint here to help you with this. Remember, our goal is to figure out how much money we have at the end of year four and the end of year five. Compounding implies geometric growth. And I'll go over this with you. And the equation that relates to geometric growth is y equals a times b to the x. A times b to the power of x. So we'll get back to this in a second. Let me show you the process I go through to find out the balance for year four and year five. I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to take my, that, that I did in the last problem. I'm going to go to my year three balance, which is 122250. I'll punch that in. But instead of finding a common difference like I did in the last problem, I'm going to find a common ratio, which implies division. So if you remember, when it was simple interest, I went 12 to 50.43 minus 11,449. In this situation, I'm going to take the 12 to 50.43 and divide it by 11,449. And I get 1.07. I need to do that one more time. I will now take the 11,449 and divided by the balance right before it, which is 10,700. And I get the same number. That's called a common ratio. The common means they're the same. And you can do it one more time. You can take 10,700 divided by 10,000 and you will also get 1.07. That common ratio tells me a lot. It tells me that to get to the next year's balance, I multiply by 1.07 each time.
and let's just check it to make sure we did it right. What I'm going to do is bring my calculator back up. I'll clear this out and let's just check to make sure we did it right. I will take my 10,000 times 1.07 and I should get 10,700. See, I do. Now I'm going to take the 10,700 times 1.07 and I should get 11,449. I'm just checking my work. So 10,700 times 1.07 and that gives me 11,449. So what I'd like you to do is pause the video and now figure out the end of year balance for year four and year five. Welcome back. Hopefully what you did on your calculator is took $12,250.43 and multiplied it by 1.07 and you should get 13107. Point ninety six, And then, hopefully you took the 13107.96 times, right, this 1.07 again, and you should get 14.025 point, you can put point fifty one or point fifty two. I'm going to put point fifty two. Point fifty one is fine as well. I'm just rounding up. And if you notice, I only went out to two decimal places because we're dealing with money. So in other words, what I did is I took this number times 1.07 to get this number, and I took this number times 1.07 to get this number. So hopefully that's what you got as well. Let's take this one step further, and let's try to figure out the account balance at year 30. Now again, we can continue to multiply by 1.07 each time until I get to year 30. That's perfectly okay. It just takes a while. So let's use the equation. Let's write an equation to represent this. I'm going to do it like so. I'm going to say y. Well, actually, I'm going to replace numbers for a and b as follows. I'm going to bring down my y. I'll bring down my equal sign. And I'm going to replace the a with my common ratio, which is, no, no, uh, let me start all over. I meant to say I'm going to replace my A with my initial investment. So A is my initial investment, which is 10,000. So the A becomes 10,000 times B. And B is my common ratio, which is 1.07. and I'll bring down my power of x. So again, I replace the A with 10,000, my initial investment, and I replace the B with my common ratio of 1.07, and then I just brought down my x. So this is my equation. I want to figure out my balance at year 30, so I'll just do this. Y equals 10,000 times 1.07, and we will replace the x with 30. And let me just show you how to punch that into your calculator. So I'm going to type punch in 10,000. 10. That's right. Parenthesis. Or you can put a time sign instead. 1.07 to the power of, which is this little up arrow right here. It'll turn red when I hit it. That's how you do to the power of 30. And that gives me $76,122.55. This equals $76,122.55. And I'll write that here as well. So in other words, if you left your 10000 in an account that paid 7%, you just let it sit there, at the end of year 30, if it's compounded yearly at a 7% rate, you'd add, you would have $76,122.55. Let's go back to the other one. When it was simple interest, it was just $31,000. The compounding interest gives you more than double of that. So I hope you can see the power of compounding interest in this particular problem. 
I just want to go over one final thing. I want to show you where the 7% shows up here. It's kind of easier to see than before. It just shows up with this common ratio. That was my common ratio. This sometimes is called a growth factor. You can rewrite this as 1 plus 0.07 because 1 plus 0.07 is 1.07 and the 7% shows up in this piece here because if you change this to a percentage it's 7% so that's where the 7% shows up again this 1.07 is called the growth factor or the common ratio but this piece of it here is the 7% so I hope you found this video useful and helpful thanks so much for watching have a great day